Hello friends, how are you today? Wow, this is a very cool and very unusual Schumann chart. Boy, we've been getting quite a few of these lately, haven't we? And I think what that shows us is that there's something about the energies that are really changing. And let's own this. There's something about us that's really changing. There's something about the human beings. <laughs> on the planet that is really changing. The most noticeable thing being that more and more people seem to be, quote, awakening. And this may be driving some very, very interesting energy changes. Because, um, you know, I don't see this as happening to us. I see us as, as us generating, and I guess being, the change. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to do an intuitive analysis and we're also going to look at the black charts because there were some really interesting movements in frequency, amplitude, and quality. First, I wanted to say that um, I have the work with me opportunity available until the middle of next week, um, January 30, 31st. <laughs> Um, I forget how many days there are in January. Yeah, 31. Um, but but uh, yeah, so give me a, give me a connection. Now this is for working with me individually. It's it's a little higher price point and uh, I do charge for this. <laughs> um, so I had one person that seemed very shocked that I would charge to work with me for six months. I don't I don't know. maybe that was that was just me perceiving that, but I just thought that that was strange. <laughs> But, you know, these things happen. <laughs> and uh, and they were actually, they did some very nice after after we met. So anyway, uh, that is why I've been emphasizing this. So what I want to say is that I will be having a group, um, but it'll be, I, I need to create, I want to create some content on my own. So that's what I'm doing on the side. And besides what I'm putting up publicly, because I want to have content for the group um, so that you don't have to be present. Because um, my previous classes, you've really had to be present. And I want people to be able to have broader access, whether it's in the middle of the night or it's, you know, in your own quiet time. And so that's what I'm doing. So I'll come out with that um, uh, after that content is created. It'll be a little bit more into the year. So that's what I wanted to share with you. And, you know, personally, I had mentioned, um, I had mentioned, well, really about in the middle of last year, but I, I went through a major life change and life shift. And I thought that I would be doing all of this, like, by the solstice of the summer solstice last year. And <laughs> you know what? It takes a little longer to get through the shift part of life shifts than we think sometimes. So now, thank goodness, thank God, I'm finally, I'm in a place where I'm moving forward. Um, and part of that is going to be to expand my offerings. And um, I know that it's, that times are tough. And so I really, um, considered whether or not to offer this work with me op opportunity. But on the other hand, what my guidance told me is that there are people out there that that are able to do this. And so I went to offer it. And while I'm working with them and creating content for the classes, um, you know, we, it, it really inspires me to, to engage with people and to work with you guys one on one, or in groups. Because, um, I love hearing about your what's going on individually for people, because for me, what I perceive is when I'm talking with someone, you know, how is the energy in the field? How is it flowing? And it's so interesting, all the unique ways that people have of inner expression and self-expression. And a lot of times we just, it's really just about learning about your own self. And so... I actually talked to a friend on the phone um, the other day, and what I said, what I was telling the person, we've been friends for a while, 
I don't really think she watches any of my videos, but, but she was having an energy issue. And what I said to her was, you know, what I do is I work with people in a way that is empowering. And I said, so what I do is I, I work with you and I teach you the skill sets or I share, right, what the skill sets are that I use to address this or I explain what I'm seeing so that you can do it on your own then, right? Because what is... Um, what what is this about if not to empower ourselves um, because once once we're empowered each of us takes that to a unique and different place and that is what is so amazing and fascinating and to me and that is one of the things over which i have so much gratitude and sometimes i'm just so amazed that i'm i'm doing this work and i'm sharing it it's been very awkward for me personally. I'm, I'm, although I do public videos, I'm actually very, very shy and private about this topic area. It's been, um, you know, I've been in interested in this and participating in this almost my whole life, but it's only been in recent years where I've been able to get myself to step forward and come out of the, come out of. <laughs> my my um cover of of um all the different things that were going on <laughs> you know one by one i had to work on each issue and i'm still doing that well let's go to the chart and the first thing i wanted to show you is the energies here before this big expression on the chart it was interesting because after the the gateways that we just had and i did two really I thought, I thought there were cool articles on this. And I showed the different choices that were presenting. And this was, I really addressed this in my Substack article about human energy and what will you align with? Like, what will you choose? What do you choose to align with? And it's interesting because then what started happening on the chart was we started getting this energy that was very spiky and kind of flowing in the matrix and then there's my bowl. And then this energy that's more sort of natural seeming to me. Now you could say that this is lighting up the matrix, I guess. But what I really perceived here, let me see if I get the chair. What I really perceived here was it's really, there's a choice of two realities that's being offered to us. And you can really see it in this image here. You know, you have the lighted up matrix. Okay, now all the light is contained within the matrix here. And sometimes I talk about these, especially going back a year or two years or three years, it, it was like these waves would really light up. It was like they would extend. First of all, they'd be much larger than what we're seeing today in the white resonance, but they would extend to the left and the right, sort of poking into the matrix and, and attempting to ground and land light um, is is what I perceived. Now, let me just back up for a second and say this is a Schumann resonance. It's an image chart of the resonance. And what this is, is in a, it's, it's non-physical energy in a range of 0 to 40 hertz. Now, 0 to 40 hertz happens to be the same range of human brain waves. And so I use this image as a visual map of human consciousness. And I interpret it based on science. Like right now, we're talking about the different hertz lines. But then I also interpret it based on my intuitive capabilities. And in the article, um, you know, what will you align with? I explain a little bit of my background on that. Okay, so so this is really, so here's the 27th today. This is really, and this is January 27th, European style dating. So this is just wild. I mean, this is just wild. You can see here that sometimes there's more of a natural flow to the energy but rather than the waves we used to have, where it was like the wave was sort of sending itself into the light, here it's more like the matrix is attempting to contain the light. And I've put up several posts on Twitter <laughs> uh, over the last day or two um, about the... Um, I, I call it the alien influence on us, but it's like a, it's like it's not pro-human. It's not, it's not 
human friendly. It's and it's really anti life. Um, and uh, so anyway, take a look at those if you want to see see some interesting comments about this. It it's really like a like a it's really like a battle almost. And it's interesting because look at all these verticals here. It doesn't quite it doesn't really quite look like the technological effect. This looks like natural energy that's that's come in. I'm not saying that there might not be something buried beyond this, but just the way that it looks is is different than how the technological effect usually presents. Um now, what was interesting was after we had those gateways I did my last two videos on, we had this very, um, well, I kind of perceived it as matrixy energy down here in the high hertz, the, the, the mid beta, this corresponds with the mid beta brain waves and high beta. And to have these sort of square and matrixy type lines, it's unusual to have this at at these levels of that correspond with these brain waves but but i feel like this is an attempt to capture our thinking it's a, it's and this is really these are like this is really very highly integrated and complex thinking by human beings right up here in the high beta and even in the mid beta this is you know kind of like low beta is sort of baseline thought and then as you start to connect the dots right you get it gets more complex and then as you integrate it it really shifts you as a being right as a human being now what's interesting is that you see here it can't get into it can't get into the very high hertz this goes up to 40 hertz here at the very bottom this is in the gamma um, brainwave range. These are our spiritual experiences. And it's so interesting how you see the attempts to shift the Overton window. Now I've I, now when I look this up, I see articles that do not say that this is our spirit. It's been removed and described with new language. Uh, you know, it's just one more, <laughs> a little bit more, more more games, more word games and, and fuckery, excuse me. Okay, so so now see here, look, it's more of that lighting up. And it's very, um, I don't know, are we having an awakening at this, at these high levels? Or isn't it an attempt to capture that? It doesn't feel very good or friendly to me, and that's an intuitive perception. And I'm going to show you something else, okay? That leads me to these conclusions. Like, look at this, <laughs> right? This is this looks like we captured, right? It's there's even like a little I see a little face in the box here. It's it's like captured energy, captured energy. Okay, that's what we're talking about here. These white lines are the box that I put around this area because basically this, this energy stopped at 17 and I'm going to show you what stopped it. This was stunning, okay? Qualities are 59, very high, very high. So you see the quality pop up here at 13 and then you see... Da -da. At, it was at 17, okay, that you see the, um, at 17, you see the pop-up in red. Actually, it was, it was double here, so that's at 16 and 17. Um, and, and qualities in red popped at a very high number as well, to 40, um, but not as high as, not as high as green just considering the energies here. Um, the, um, you know, yellow peaked at 17, but it, there's so much action has been in the yellow, literally for the last several weeks, almost all of January, that now it's like we have a response from green and red. That's what I'm perceiving here. So yellow is actually not as strong this time around. Here's what I was considering. I, I often say that the darkness rises before the expanded light. Okay. Now what you see here is, in my view, this is the human energy. And then here is the denser energy. It could be very, it could be our anger 
Okay, it could be our fear. And the deeper and denser that that gets, I think all of that is in the red. When it's much lighter, I think it's in the yellow. But it could it could also, in the red, in my view, be our passions. Um, but it could also be the forces of darkness or the shadow personality within the individual human being. This is my anecdotal interpretation of what the ranges mean indicated by the colors, okay? And so I often say the, the darkness rises before the light. Why is that? The darkness in a way is more sensitive to the light because the light can fracture darkness. Um, the, I don't want to go into that now. It's, it's, it's the science-y aspect of this. Um, but, but, um, but that's the bottom line. Darkness rises before light. Now, what you see here is darkness rising after um, the human, which I'm, which I'm considering as being, considering as being aligned with the light. Um, I feel that the human um, energy, I, I see the green as representing the general state of humanity. I feel that it's, it really responds to, um, to the white resonance it, the human energy responds to the celestial. It responds to expanding. Um, because these experiences feel very good in the human body. If you're having a spiritual awakening, your body, I mean, well, for me anyway, my body feels amazing. Okay, it feels good. The light expands. The light, I find the light heals my body. And so that's why I'm saying that that when the green rises, it's like we're taking in more light within ourselves, even though you don't see it here in the white resonance. And why is that? It's the it's the expanded, in this case, sudden soul connection, because the soul within the human is fueling the light within the human. That happened at 13. Let's see what is going on here at 13. So it's about right here. Interesting. It's interesting that there was a almost a pause here. Isn't that interesting? A pause after um, this more lighted group of energy. But it's interesting because you see how the light here and then gets funneled into this line, and then you have this light and it's funneled into this point. It's there's a capturing mechanism going on here that's being illustrated. So what I want to say is if this is a this is a map of human consciousness. That's how I see it. And so humans communicate in stories. It's kind of like, if you remember, I've talked about this. I talked about this in the summer, in my videos, in the summer, May, June, July of, of 2021. And it's because I kept hearing in my mind, Shaka, when the walls fell. <laughs> right? And if you remember Star Trek um, with Captain was it? No, no, it was um, The Next Generation. Anyway, to get to the point here, um, the, the, the captain, okay, ended up being on a planet with another captain from a completely different culture. In the other culture, they somehow spoke the same language. The other culture only could communicate in story. So if you didn't understand the stories... Um, if you didn't understand the stories, you wouldn't understand what the other species was saying. But through trial and error and a lot of gesturing and going through battle essentially together, what happened was is that um, um, you know the, the enterprise captain started to understand the meanings of the story of the, captain from the other species all right so so that's kind of what you like what you have here you have a story right by some energy that is matrix oriented that is attempting to and when i say matrix i'm just i'm talking about the vertical and horizontal lines and then the vertice is where those meet right so there's some energy here that is very fond of this geometry Right? And then you just have the flowy random humanness, 
right? Of, of, that is more naturally human. It's not that this energy isn't natural. It, it is unto itself. This matrix energy is natural unto the truth of what it is, but it doesn't, in my view, seem very natural for some aspect of our humanity. Now, can our minds operate within this kind of energy? Absolutely. Because our mind is, it's malleable that way, and it can learn to accept this kind of pattern. And that's the whole idea of hacking the humans, which has been talked about so much, if you, and, and which I have on my Twitter currently, comments on. But that's, that's what I'm, so that's what I'm saying here. There's, there's a capturing and there's a, oh no, we won't go. And that's here in the qualities. And so when the red drops off a cliff like this, it rises up and it rises, first the green rises, right? We get the strength of connecting closer with the soul because in my view the quality as i as i put up here it's it's like clarity it's like clearness it's the truth of what this green range truly represents so if it represents a human then it's the truth of the nature of the individual soul for each person right because i believe that humans emanate from the soul That's our life force emanates from the soul. I went all through this in the article, What Will You Align With? So what happens is is we get get spiritually stronger, and then what happens is we fight back, and it peaks here at 17 hours, and then boom, we're back down. And what happens image-wise? Well, that's where... That's where this image breaks. This image of attempted capture. That's where it breaks. I'm going to take off this line here so that you can you can see it without. I want I boxed it, but so so basically, this hard line right here. That's about 17 hours, and so it it breaks off. Now there's a little bit a little bit past it in different places. The matrix where the matrix you know sort of peters out. <laughs> a few pixels later or a couple pixels later. But that's that's what's going on here. Okay. So so you see we burst forth energetically from the heart and then we step forward with what? With our passion. And look, it might be expressed through anger. Um but we've we've developed enough confidence to step out of the fear. That that's what I see here. Now let me show you Okay, so, and, and, and it's interesting because the power isn't coming from the energy power source in the chart. See here, amplitudes is power, essentially. So you see the, pow- the power, it's relatively low. You know, this is nothing to write home about. Although, interestingly, see here, green is at 19. It does have a high. Um second to white resonance which is not usual okay so so and that came the day before at actually at 17 and then 24 hours later that's where we get the strength right so we had the right about here um there was a rise in red but the no um i'm just looking at the keys uh so we get we get a we get the rise in qualities here, and then we we get the rise in amplitudes here, where we break the connection with this controlling force. But you see, the power this is what I'm trying to say. The power isn't from. Look, it's not from the amplitudes that we do this. It's from. It's from the divinity within us. It's from the truth of what powers our life force. (laughs) That is potent, isn't it? And see, look here. It's so fascinating. You see that we've had a rise up here, right? We had a rise up. We went above 25.2. This is all on the charts I've put on social media and in my articles. If you go on the sub stack, the charts are all on the sub stack as well. And sometimes I put more than one day or several days in a substack. But here, it's like we hit the deck. 
So I don't I don't understand exactly how how that how we do this because we we stand forth and then in the frequencies it's like we hit the deck oh gosh oh gosh i think what it is is that be this is the qualities being the light that we are busts the matrix you see it's actions in the human world actions in the real world matter but what matters the most is initiating that from your heart and soul. And this is what I talked about on Twitter this morning. You know, that we're the ones. We're the ones that create the dynamic and the change. So I want to just show you the center of this. Let me see here. So here's the, the whole thing. Um, and you, here's the wobble here that I, I talked about this in my recent postings. And then this just looks very, the lines don't look like the technologically, cre- I think possibly technologically created effect that we see. It's, it's more like there's something in the environment that is emanating some kind of strange energy. That's what the capture energy is. That's that's how I perceive this. It, in in a way, it's actually quite beautiful. I mean, you have to. <laughs> I I am appreciating the strange beauty of this. Um, it doesn't seem to me to be friendly. It feels uncomfortable to me. But check this out, okay? So this is different than the gates of heaven. This looks like a technological device of some sort that's being revealed to us that emanates broadly in the environment. I don't know, that's that's what it looks like. Um, now here's, wait, I want to go to, I made it easier to see here. Yeah, nope, not that one. Here it is. Okay, so what happened was in the middle of the night last night at like 2 a.m., uh, my time, I took this picture and I think this stops around 1600 hours. But what was amazing to me was when I took the picture, look at the images. It's almost like there's four women under here and they are there underneath and supporting. Do you see this? It's a, it's like a king on a throne. It's so fascinating. I looked at that. And I was like, oh my, God, that's like a dude sitting on a throne. Um, and, and he's on top of these four, they seem like women, but they might they might be male and female, I don't know. Um, and it's almost like a portal-like effect or an energy. They're generating the energy to, that supports this being on the throne. Um, I don't know if it's a king or a queen or a lion or... And then there's almost like this fish skeleton here. All right, but it's also it's very spiky. It looks again, it looks like some kind of strange energy, and there's sort of these little beings here. I don't know what they are. Um, I don't I don't feel like this is a suge- celestial feel to it, but it is like something attempting to emulate. Um, is it something attempting to emulate God, or is it something? that has a lot of power that sits on the throne or is it a technolo- some kind of technology? I don't know. Like, look at this. Isn't that amazing? And and this image is doubled, essentially, from around 1,600 hours. But look at these um, boxes and lines and patterns. You, you, we don't normally see this. It's m- usually much more flowery, much more... Um, like full of sacred geometries. And there's there's faces you might see, numbers, letters, I don't know. Um, so I just want to show you this slowly and go up to the top here. And then at the top, there's it's almost like an antenna, isn't it? <laughs> it's making me think about Star Trek again when the Borg, do you, I, that was a, it was one of the Star Trek movies where the Borg try to go backwards in time and build a, uh, they try to go backwards in time and um, capture Earth by going backwards in history and turning humanity into Borgs. And what happens is, is that the, the Enterprise goes back with them and stops them. 
And then in one of the other movies, a small number of these of these Borg, the cyborg humanoid combinations, have survived. They get discovered um, sometime later in human history, and then they attempt to build an antenna to contact, you know, their people or whatever. Anyway, it's very. I'm just saying that it's not doesn't seem human friendly. Um, not that humans couldn't build it, but you know, could humans build something not human friendly? It's interesting because I want to address this. I think there's um, there's a couple lines of thought here, and I want to thank my friend Andrea, who, um, you know, I've spoken with this a, a lot about, and one of the things that she has always emphasized is that these things, even the things that seem evil in a way, in, there is some way in which they are not fully separate from who we are as living human beings. And the thing is, is when we push something so far out of itself, that it out of ourselves, that we that is originally ours. I'm not talking about some kind of an outside influence coming in. I'm talking about when we distance ourselves from the truth of who we are, and then we push that out, 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 out and it gets so distorted that it almost takes on a life of its own. And when you walk the path of the spiritual warrior, the prayer warrior, what you do is you find these things that were yours and you you return them to yourself. You return to soul energy only, right? The rest of it burns to dust is is what I've found. There's other ways to do it as well. but And you, you withdraw your pure soul energy and you return it to you, yourself, your greater soul, um, your, you know, the source of all that is, you know, God in heaven. I mean, however you want to describe this. Um, but I, I inquire of divine will. What is in the highest good for me to do? So it, it, this requires a personal ability to commune and receive information about what is in your highest good from your divine source, right? From God, from your own soul. This is a personal practice and process. But each of us has a conscience. Each of us has human intuition, right? So you have the ability to get good at discerning what the answers here are for yourself. So so when you retrieve just the pure soul energy that was yours, okay, and you retrieve it back to yourself, this is what is known as a soul retrieval. And and sometimes it's a, um, you know, sometimes it's a lifetime that we've lived previously and what it's not in highest good to bring it back to this lifetime, you, you know, return it to the soul, but you retain the information, the skill sets, the capabilities, um, you know, that, that integrate into the greater whole of who you are as a living human being now. So, so, It's a process that requires dedication and commitment. And and the most thing that it requires is love and self-love. The love for your, of you, for all of who you are. To love these disparate parts of yourself. To love the things you've done that you aren't proud of. To love the things you've done that you struggle to forgive yourself for, the, to love the things you've done, the ways you've been, what has happened to you down to every single thing, every single one. When you can bring yourself to love every part of what you've experienced in this lifetime, sometimes people are also dealing with other lifetimes, but and in, in even to love that which you cannot remember because it was so traumatic, right? You can love the associated experiences that end up reintegrating into the whole. Now, what happens is sometimes people become fascinated with these things. They become fascinated and they don't truly want to learn or integrate. It's when they become identified with what has happened to them and insist on living that identity. And that's okay, 
All right, that is what that person chooses until they choose something different. Now, a lot of times there are people who, you know, sometimes we just need to spend time identifying with whatever that is, whatever that is, whatever result it produced. And, you know, we do these things until we're, until we're ready to let go of it and then let it, let it, what is not ours burn to dust and retrieve the soul energy. And the thing about God, the thing about the most, God, the most high, the creator of the universe, the living soul, is that divinity is so patient with us and so loving that God gives us it's his energy. The creator lends us as much of its energy as we desire to explore these things for as long as we wish to. And so, you know, when I was younger, I used to look at, I used to look at other people doing things that I didn't do. And I didn't think I'd do in this lifetime. One of the big ones is is really amazing sports people, you know, really amazing athletes. I have always not been athletic in this lifetime at all. And I, I, um, it took years and years before I realized that I've had at least one lifetime where I was very athletic. And apparently that's just not, that's just not what's on my path this lifetime. And, and, uh, but I, I would say stuff to myself like, well, you know, in another lifetime, I'm going to do that. And then I'd see other, oh, cool, it must be so cool to live like that, whatever. In another lifetime, I'm going to do that. This is a fascination, right? And on the one hand, we have our free will. And certainly, in my view, God is willing to give us every single experience like this that we want, that we desire, in the positive and in the negative, right? <clears throat> As I've proceeded on the spiritual path, I made the choice to let go of all those desires. And, you know, I was always very confused as to what the Buddhists meant when they said, let go of desire, you know? Like, it just sounds so, what? What does that even mean? Like, how do you even do that? What? And, and I confused desire with the love in my heart and with my joy for life. But to, for me, this is the desire that I've let go of, to allow myself to be in the present moment, experiencing what that is now and being okay. You know, if I really desire to do something, I've most likely already lived that lifetime. <laughs> That's where I've come to now, just me personally, and I honor whatever other people's desires and choices and everything is on this. But where I came to now is I want to be free of of all of the attachment, the matrixy stuff, the courting and everything. I just want to be here living as a living soul in human form in the now moment and bringing more and more of the truth of who I am into this physical body and seeing what does that mean that I can do right now in this moment and no desires for anything else beyond that, beyond to live as the communion with my own soul, with God, the you know, the spark of the of life of the creator that that I am, that it enlivens my soul. What do we want to do now? Like, <laughs> what is that in this moment? And for me, this is pioneering. Like, you know, in, in America, the pioneers <laughs> went across the land and, you know, had all these incredible adventures um, and, and um, expanding across the United States, right? Well, to me, the energy that I am more and more coming into this body, which is the land. The physical body is the land, right? And this is owned by my own soul, right? Me and my soul. My soul is who is speaking through, right? The construct of my mind, my brain, and the physical bo- construct of my vocal cords, put the lungs pushing air through to be able to speak right? This is what it is. This is what it's about. And exploring what it is being in this state of being is the most 
fascinating thing in the universe to me. <laughs> and so I am and so it is, right? That I, I consider that this is what it is to be in 5D and to, to be in a fifth dimensional experience. And do I go in it and out of it? Absolutely. One of the greatest things that I personally have struggled with, even just in the last few days, is understanding where is that matrixy aspect attempting to influence me? And, you know, is, is this down to even? Is this thought mine? Is that shade of emotion that just sort of flickered through me? Was that generated by me and my living soul within this human form? Or is it something that passed through me or that attempted to engage me to create elsewise or in other ways than my own living human soul. <laughs>